We will look at Love Turned to Hatred by Sir John Suckling. Before that, we'll have a look at what Cavalier, who Cavalier poets are or Cavalier poetry is. Cavalier poetry is a genre of poetry. Sorry. Cavalier poetry is a genre of poetry that is typically characterized by straightforward and refined poetry with common themes about romantic love, seizing the day and enjoying life. The Cavalier poets, members of the aristocracy, wrote in the 17th century and supported King Charles I, who was later executed as a result of a civil war. They were known as royalists. Cavalier poetry is straightforward yet refined. Many of the poems centered around sensual, romantic love and also the idea of carpe diem, which means to seize the day. To the Cavalier poet, enjoying life was far more important than following moral codes. They lived for the moment. Cavalier poetry mirrored the attitudes of courtiers. The meaning of cavalier is showing arrogant or offhand disregard, dismissive or carefree and nonchalant or jaunty. This describes the attitude of cavalier poets. Some of the most prominent cavalier poets are Thomas Carew, Richard Lovelace, Robert Herrick and John Suckley. They emulated jo Ben Jonson, a contemporary of Shakespeare. These poets oppose metaphysical poetry, such as that of John Donne. So John Donne in a metaphysical poetry, pole alla cavalier poets say the another. While poets like John Donne wrote with a spiritual, scientific, and moral focus, the cavalier poets concentrated on the pleasures of the moment. Metaphysical poets also wrote in figurative, lofty language, while the cavaliers were simple, being more apt to say what they meant in clear terms. The Cavalier poet wrote short, refined verses and the tone of Cavalier poetry was generally easygoing. Okay? Now we can have a look at Love Turned to Hatred. Now these lines are self-explanatory. I will not love one minute more, I swear. No, not a minute, not a sigh or tear thou gets from me. Or one kind look again. Though thou should squat me to it, and wouldst begin, I will not think of thee, but as men do of deaths and sins, and then I'll curse thee too. For thy sake, woman shall be now to me less welcome than at a midnight ghost shall be. I'll hate so perfectly that it shall be treason to love that man that loves a she. Nay, I will hate the very good I swear, that's in thy sex, because it doth lie there, their very virtue, grace, discourse, and wit, and all for thee. What? Wilt thou love me yet? Okay, so you can see that the poet here is saying that I will not love one minute more, I swear, no, not a minute more. Okay, um, it's a sonnet. Um, for 14 lines. Not a sigh or a tear thou gets from me. I'll never sigh for you. I'll not shed a tear for you. Or one kind look again. You will not get one kind look from me again. Okay. So he's truly disgusted with love. Though thou should court to, to court me to it. Even if you try to get it from me. And what's begin. So no matter what you do. No matter how much you try to get it from me. You are not going to get it from me. I will not think of thee. But as men do of debts and sins. Okay. Like men think of debt. Of having a debt and sin. That's how I'll think of you. And then I'll curse you too. For thy sake. Woman shall be now to me. Less welcome than at midnight ghost shall be. Hmm? <laughs> because of you. You know women shall be like ghosts to me at midnight. A very unpleasant, scary situation. I'll hate so perfectly that it shall be treason to love that man that loves a she. Hmm? So he's saying that I'll hate so perfectly that it will become treason or it trees or such a great, um, you know, it will be like a sin. It will be so uh, such uh, such a negative thing to love somebody. When a man loves a woman, it would be uh, a treason. Another point of Nay, I will hate the very good. I swear. That's in thy sex. So, because of you, I'll hate everything. Even if there is something good, I'll hate it. Okay? If it's Even if it's virtue or grace or discourse or wit, whatever it is, because of you, I'll hate everything there is um, in a woman. What? Will thou love me yet? Hmm? 
what what will you, will you love me even then will you love me so this is you know this is uh, written in a very sarcastic tone വളരെ ലവിനെ കുറിച്ച് വളരെ സാർക്കാസ്റ്റിക് ആയിട്ട് വളരെ നെഗറ്റീവ് ആയിട്ട് എഴുതിയിരിക്കുന്നതാണ് ഓക്കെ സോ ലവ് ഇസ് ഡിറൈഡഡ് ത്രൂ ഔട്ട് ദ പോയം ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് കൺസിഡേർഡ് സംതിങ് ടു ബി ഹെയ്റ്റഡ് ടു ബി മോക്ഡ് ടു ബി റെഡിക്യൂൾഡ് ടു ബി ഡിസ്ലൈക്ക് and there's also a kind of sarcasm i will not love you one more ingane kaliyaki parayna pole aanu what will thou love me at hmm? and he says i will not think of thee but as men do of debts and sins hmm? so he is saying that i i will consider you know i will think of love only as uh, only like how people think of debt and sin so among the group of cavalier poets john suckling is often known for his cynical vision of love his sonnet love turned to hatred epitomizes this view according to the convention of traditional sonnets which demands a passionate declaration of unrequited love or an emotional denunciation of love the speaker in this sonnet vehemently renounces his love i will not love one minute more i swear the feeling of aversion and hostility underlie when the speaker affirms he was not going to waste time bemoaning his lost love okay i'll need to second in the portha kalayathilla na parayna cold and unperplexed the speaker resolves that he would give no kind look to his past lover as a notion of love no longer appeals to him all right no not a minute not a sigh or tear thou gets from me or one kind look again though thou should squat me to it and would begin the tone of the poem further establishes the nature and the extent of the sonnet's cynicism the anger and resentment stem from the speaker's experience with his thwarted love all right so he is looks like he is a he's he's rejected and he's very um, angry about it and you can see the resentment the speaker suggests that his past lover deserves to be cursed it is a fault that he is inclined to mistrust all women and also those men who are in love with a woman i'll hate so perfectly that it shall be treason to love that man that loves a she she means a woman the speaker in these lines seems to argue that women are fickle are fickle okay are ana and the idea that women impart the same trait to men who are under their influence the speaker's hostility towards his past lover is so intense that he is determined to hate even the very virtue grace discourse and wit of the women folk the anger and the disgust prevalent in the poem seem to convey how the speaker feels wronged by his past lover one may even interpret his hatred stemming from his feeling of helplessness at the end of the sonnet the speaker seems to boldly confess that his disappointment and hatred has rendered him hard to love and yet he asks the past lover will thou love me yet suckling through the use of his conceits for instance i will not think of thee but as men do of debts and sins and identifying women as midnight ghosts parodies the bright courtly love of the elizabethan poetry it is a parody you know in elizabethan poetry it is love is celebrated and here it is derided although the sonnet love turned to hatred may not represent suckling's final vision of love suckling's final vision of love it is closer to his general treatment of the embittered cynical love so he is one person who has a cynical view of love and it has been powerfully portrayed in the sonnet love turned to hatred okay so uh, we'll look at what cavalier poets are Uh, who cavalier poets are or what, what cavalier poetry is and um, read th- this note okay thank you